In this segment, we're going to review setting up your audio and MIDI devices. We've just opened up Cubase for the first time. The first step is now to set up our audio and MIDI devices. Cubase supports a variety of MIDI and audio interfaces. Select Devices, Device Setup, and the Device Setup window will open. Choose VST Audio Bay. Here, we're going to select an audio interface and determine the way it interacts with Cubase. Right now, the ASIO multimedia driver is active. I did this on purpose to demonstrate that the total input and output latency and numbers here are way too big for smooth audio recording. Latency, as you may know, is the amount of time it takes for your system to respond to whatever messages are sent to it. You should choose as low a latency as you can without having any digital distortion. Dis digital distortion is usually manifested in crackling noises. This computer happens to have two audio cards. One is connected via a PCI slot, and the other is connected via FireWire. Both cards do have their own ASIO drivers. Latency is indicated here. Latency is directly related to the size of your audio buffer. Increasing or decreasing its size will increase or decrease your latency. Usually, you can set up latency in the external control panel that came with your sound card. We're just going to do that here. One more quick point. Buffer size is set up by the number of samples it can store. In this case, 256 samples. Latency relates to the sample rate in this way. Currently, we have 6.5 milliseconds of input-output delay and a 44.1 kilohertz project's sampling rate. Let's change it to 96 kilohertz. Click OK. Open device setup. Now the latency equals 3 milliseconds. Okay, back to our VST Audio Bay interface. By checking this box, you allow other applications to use the ASIO driver, even if Cubase is running. And of course, this applies to Cubase SX and SL. Direct monitoring allows you to bypass Cubase. Your hardware needs to be ASIO 2.0 compatible. Next we've got Expert Settings. You will probably not need to use these options very often. The first one is Audio Priority. This allows you to determine the processes in Cubase which have priority access to your CPU's time. Next we've got Preload Amount. This parameter ensures smooth playback. Lower latency. This allows on-the-fly mixing if you get playback problems such as clicks. It's a good idea to check this out. Multiprocessing. These options are for computers with more than one CPU. Adjust for recording latency 
and record placement offset are self-explanatory. Okay, once you choose your driver, it appears right below. From there, you can access the clock source and control panel of your sound card. Next, we'll look at VST inputs and outputs. Here you will find the input and output ports of your sound card. The number of ports you have depends on your particular hardware. You can activate or deactivate the ports and then rename them. This is especially important if you plan to move your project to another computer. Accordingly, the names of the ports on the other computer have to match. Right now, I've got four active inputs and eight active outputs. Let's set up our external MIDI devices and MIDI ports. Under All MIDI Inputs, I'm going to activate both available MIDI devices. This gives me the option of recording all incoming MIDI data to the same MIDI track. On this page, you can specify which MIDI ins and outs Cubase will use for new tracks. Listed under Direct Music are the available MIDI inputs and outputs in your system. The active column shows which ports are currently in use. In the Show column, you can specify which port is going to be listed in the pop-up menus on your MIDI tracks. You can also rename your port here. Windows MIDI. This works much in the same way as direct music. One more thing. Hiding a MIDI port doesn't turn it off if the MIDI port has already been selected. And this concludes our segment on audio and MIDI setup.